Whether you believe it or not, the Shroud of Turin is fascinating. Hey guys, it's John here in the studio on a beautiful, beautiful sunny day outside, drinking my broth, enjoying my morning. I wanted to talk about the Shroud of Turin this morning. Um, for many of you know who've seen my my uh, video called I Took a Picture of Jesus. It's one of the earliest videos on my channel where I was in Norway and I snapped a picture of a church and half of a face showed up in the picture. When I laid half of the face of the Shroud of Turin on that picture, it completed the face. And it was interesting how how all of the the parts lined up so beautifully. And actually, when you see it, when you see it uh, connected like that, the Shroud of Turin side, you can see the swelling on the, on the left eye like I described uh, after my, my regression. What I find interesting about the Shroud of Turin is there's such a hotly debated um, scientific struggle around it. Science is based on empirical evidence, and all empirical evidence is found in this illusion of a belief around us. So people looking for an answer will often go into it with a theory that this is a medieval piece or this is a biblical era piece. And they'll go out to, to prove or disprove what it is they believe. The interesting thing about the science of the Shroud of Turin is, is many scientists will tell you it's from the 1200s through carbon dating. And what's really interesting about that is they'll, they'll talk about the, the the carbon dating, but they don't talk about the fact that the actual image on it is is a, an X-ray. It's it's actually in the the negative. It's like looking at the in the old days of film cameras. It's like looking at the negative. It all the colors are reversed, and they have a hard time understanding what you know what what that is. The, it, and they're finding that that as the more they dive into it, they, there's just some things they they can't understand. They haven't been able to replicate it. They've tried multiple, multiple times. And I'd like to postulate a different theory. Now, the theory I'd like to talk about is the idea that we know scientifically, and this has been proven many, many times over, that at the moment of death, our bodies um, emit a radiation, sometimes 10 times, sometimes 1,000 times more. And that thousand times more radiation at the moment of death, it's, it's literally our body leaving the physical form, our, our self, our, our consciousness leaving the physical form. It's us going away from the physical. We literally leave the body behind, and the body begins to decay because the vehicle is no longer being used. And what's left behind are the, the memories of the people who knew us in life. And, the, and as their memories start to fade, and the body starts to fade. It starts to decay. What's really interesting is that when you, when you look at this idea of radiation, you know, what causes an X-ray? Radiation, right? Imagine if you, if you had, were somebody who could emit this radiation while wrapped in a cloth from head to toe. Imagine if you emitted a radiation that was 10,000 times more powerful or 5,000 or even, or even 1,000 times more powerful, you know, Maybe the conditions were just right, the moisture in the tomb, the whatever. You know, the, whatever the situation was, that radiation that gets emitted from the body, you know, why couldn't it create some sort of image on this cloth that was wrapped around this body? Yeah. That's one thing that the scientists have yet to figure out what, or get a, get a true theory on because they know that it's a, it's, a, it's a negative image. So that in itself is fascinating. The other thing is, is that the original, the original guy who did the carbon-14 dating on the Shroud of Turin was um, he took a, they took a sample, they did the carbon-4 dating, came back to 1200s. But what's really interesting is when new data came to him at, towards the end of his life that showed that, that there was a process called reweaving, that in the 1200s that the Shroud had been caught in a fire at a church and it got damaged. And there's this process called reweaving. Now, the fire is, is documented. We know that the fire happened. We know that the shroud got, got damaged. That's documented. 
So you have to ask yourself, does, does the smoke harm carbon dating in, the, in that situation, number one? Number two, there's this process called reweaving, like I said, where they repaired it through reweaving in new threads to make it whole again. Now, the scientist who was actually um, responsible for the original carbon-14 dating used the, the, the data from his cutting, which came from an area that was repaired. So at the end of his life, when the new data came up, he literally said, you know, I, I think I'm probably wrong. We should retest and was trying to get a retesting going, and then he passed away. So it wasn't, he wasn't able to finish the work he was trying to do, but he recanted his, his C14, claiming that the area that he did was, was rewoven, and it was proven to be rewoven. The other testing that they've done on the, car, on the, the um, shroud is interesting because they're, they're picking up pollen and evidence of plants that were around during the time of Jesus, during the time of Jeshua. And so they're, they're finding conflicting evidence, right? So now the, the critical thinking mind is like, well, we have carbon-14 dating that says it's, the, it's from the Middle Ages. Now, every scientist from, from that point forward keeps leaning back into this carbon-14 dating. But the one guy who said, who did the dating, says he recanted his his actual testimony saying that this is not accurate because we took it from this area, which they, they pretty much were able to prove was a rewoven piece. So whether it's, whether you believe it or not, you know, it's right now, it's, there's so many theories in the air about what it is. You have to question the idea of how can a negative image be put on it? And how can pollen from the time of, of Joshua be on, on the, the shroud itself? For me personally, I think it comes down to, like everything else in spirituality, it's what do you believe? What do you believe? I personally believe that the shroud is real. You know, people are going to tell me I'm wrong or I'm right. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm very confident in my belief that it's real. When I look at the injuries on the body on the shroud, they're very consistent with what I saw. Right, so it comes it comes back to this idea of you have to choose what you believe about the shroud of Turin. I personally believe it's real, and I believe the science is trying to figure it out. And people who are the scientists themselves are going into it with theories to either debunk it or prove it. And the ones that debunk it are going to find proof of that because that's what they believe. So they're going to see the empirical evidence in this illusion of belief of it being. Uh, a medieval forgery, and then the ones who are trying to prove that it's real are going to see the evidence that it's real, and they're going to do that because that's what they're putting out. That's their faith. That's their belief. They're putting that out, so they're going to see the empirical evidence of that. Does it matter? No. Well, I think we all spend too much time thinking about the past, and I think we ought to spend more time thinking about the future, or the now more specifically, because the future is just what we're, we're creating, it's coming towards us depending on what we're in the now. And so when I look at this idea of the Shroud of Turin and its authenticity, I choose to believe it's real. And that is my choice. And other people will argue and be mad and they'll say, this is medieval, this is not whatever. That's your, that's your chosen belief. And you say, but I have data. Well, there's data on both sides. So it really comes down to you making your own personal choice about whether you want to believe it's real or not. I believe it's real, and that's my, my take on the whole thing. You guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. See you. Bye.